Connor Ben. Connor Ben. Connor Ben. Connor Ben. Connor ben. Chris Eubank Jr. against Connor Ben has been officially postponed. Yeah. Connor Ben is legally eligible to fight. It's just good to be back in business, man. Through all this, have you come to realise that you need boxing? I can't live without boxing. It's the maddest thing because I never thought that would ever be the case. I can't live without boxing. This is my life, it's what I do, it's who I am, it's my identity, it's in my DNA. You know, if you're talking boxing, I'm, I am boxing. You know, I'm, I'm born, I am born to fight. You know, my, at the end of the day, I've got my dad's DNA. You know, so I'm a fighter. I fight every single day. You know, I fought my demons every day. I fight challenges every day. We're all fighters, we all fight something. That's the easiest fight, is in there against a physical man, you know? So, yeah, I just feel like this is what I'm made to do. I'm created to do this. I'm born to do this. I'm born to fight. Connor, I've been around you on media days and the journalists are asking the questions that they have to ask. Do you foresee a time when at this stage of the build up to a fight you can talk only about boxing? Yeah, I don't know because it's played a big part in my life. It's a big chapter. It's, you know, it was, it was life changing. So I'm not too sure. I can't answer the question. I ain't got crystal ball, so I can't see the future, but I do know the I'm here to fight, I'm ready to fight, and I know that come fight night, that's the only topic that's spoken about. You've said that the whole episode has made you a better, stronger person. Will it, has it made you a better, stronger fighter? The way I look at it is, I've had to deal with me every single day in my head for the past 18 months. I've had to fight me every single day, and I can show you when you don't get no rest from that and you're fighting yourself every single day from the minute you wake up to the minute you go to bed that's a lot harder than fighting a man in the ring three minute rounds imagine 18 months every hour of the day having to live with within your head you know so for me it was it was building up resilience it was building up strength discipline courage um, and i give myself a pat on the back for for the way I've been, the way, the way I've changed and the man I've become and how disciplined I've stayed, how determined I've been um, in the gym, still, still working, still grafting, still, still putting in the graveyard shifts in. So yeah, it's made me a better fighter because the discipline, the work ethic, the determination is unmatched, it's unquestioned. You can't question my, my dedication to the sport boxing. So when it came to getting back in the ring against Rodolfo Orozco, as you did last September, what sort of emotions were at play? Was the main one relief, motivation? Just what, what, what oh was man, happening? there was so much. It was like my body just shut down. I've never had that happen to me before in the changing room. Never in, and this is the first time I've spoken on it. I just shut down. Like, like my body had just, my brain had just gone like, you need to sit down. So I lay down in the changing room before heading out to the fight. And I'm like, I've never, normally Tony's got to go, come, calm down, calm down, sit down, relax for fun. I was like, Tony, I need to sit down, mate. It was just a lot to, to take in. It was like years and years and years, well, months and months and months of, of it feels like years and years and years, but months and months and months of, of a lot here. Just keep coming, kept coming. What about this, what about that, what about this, what about that? And, when I got in there, I managed to put it all in a box and then treat this as what it is. This is what I do. Why am I question? Why am I having these? This is what I do. I'm born to do this. You know, we understandably have been talking a lot about Conor Ben's outside the ring issues. Our right hand from Ben and another one and a left hook. And how does Rodolfo Orozco continue to take these? And still undefeated Ben. So when you came back 
to the dressing room. You've won, you've boxed for the first time in the best part of 18 months. W what was the process then, <laughs> having almost shut down? Yeah, it was like, I did, yeah, it's the weirdest thing, I never have that. Normally I'm like hyped up, like Tony's got to hold me back, like on the leash, like I'm just like ready to go. And that's normally what it's like in my changing room. If you know me, if you've been in my changing room, you know it's like, oh, what, let me at him, let me at him. That's how I get in the changing room. and. When I went back to the changing room after the fight, I was like, yeah, this ain't an easy sport. <laughs> I was like, I was like the Terminator. Like, he just kept coming. But it was easy in there. It was like sparring. That was how I, I felt in there. It was like a glorified sparring session. That was how I felt. I felt like it was just like, just take my time. He's fighting for his life. I'm in there treating it like a sparring session. So do you fear that that might happen again. I mean, Eddie Hearn's talking about fighting three times this year. Are you going to have that kind of psychological battle every time? Uh, no, until this, until my case is done, um, I feel like it's a lot uh, for me to deal with. I'm very emotional guy as it is. I'm very vulnerable. I'm very animated. I'm very so. I've never gone through anything in my life before. I've never gone through adversity. I've never gone through, so I've been able to fully just focus on the one objective. And there was no noise. You know, if anything, I was just proving the hype is real. You know, whereas now it's like, on fight we come here get told, this has just happened, Con. Or, and stories leaked, that's just happened. And then it's like, it's like, oh man. Like, all I want to do is fight. Like, all I want, can I just do what I love? You know, and then, I, and then again, it gets down to demotivated. You know, and then that's where, again, where discipline overrides. And it's like, Connor, sort yourself out. You're here to do a job, mate. You're here to go in there and handle business. You're not here, stop feeling sorry for yourself. Because if I ain't gonna do it, who's gonna do it for my family? If I ain't gonna get in there and do what I do, who else is gonna do it? And that's, then that's how I, it's like two, two personalities are, poor me and, you know, you know, like, yeah, you know, I should just, and, and then it's like, mate, sort yourself out. Sort yourself out, who, who do you think you are? You know, and then, and then that's what I get like, yeah, getting his own. Have you had to sort yourself out in moving on from Chris Eubank Jr. to, to Peter Dobson, getting your head around that? Uh, yeah, it's not even Eubank Jr. Like, he's a, yeah, I don't care about him. It's the public, it's the fight I wanted to give the public, but. So you're talking about it's the magnitude of the fight that you've had to get over? Yes. It's the final eliminators, world titles, uh, biggest names in 147 division. That's what's hard. That's what's hard. And it's like, it's so challenging to go to them fires and names to them fire. Someone who no one knows or un unheard of. It's hard, you know, but it's like, okay, no problem. Like. I've just got to do what I can control and can do what I can, and that's be the best fighter I can be and make these fights look like the fights they're meant to be. Is it a bit of a backward step? Does it annoy me? Does it bother me that the big fights aren't made? Of course it does, is it would any fighter, because there's a lot of talk. I don't know how much more I got to do to make these big fights. Like, you know, the big names. I've been, taught, I've been beefing with everyone with the big names, saying I want this fight, and they want the fights too. It's just frustrating that the fights aren't being made. Um, because I don't know what else I can do on my part. I deliver 10 out of 10, you know, so it is frustrating for me, yeah, but I'll take my frustration out of my opponent. And this one is happening in Las Vegas for so long, the fight capital of the world. Your dad fought there, a memorable fight against R.M. Barkley. What does it mean to you? I didn't even know my dad fought Barkley in Vegas. That's mad. You talk about following in your father's footsteps. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I didn't plan on... Um, and he did it in a round, no pressure. <laughs> no pressure, I'll get him out 30 seconds then. <laughs> First shot. Yeah, 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 come in. Gotcha. Boom, boom. Gotcha, gotcha. Ah. <laughs> Why are you flinching, bro? I feel like it's a massive chapter in my story. Um, I feel like this is this whole past 18 months is the biggest chapter and probably a career-defining chapter of, of the the book that the, that I'll be writing. You know, so it's a it's a long way left to go. You know, think I'm still only 27 years old. I mean, it's it's crazy because I forget. It feel like I've been in the game for like 
ages, but I've been in the spotlight from my first fight. You know, and just continue to grow, and I just feel like I'm excited to fight back, fight in America. It's where all the world titles are. It's where all the, you know, the world champions are in my weight division. So, yeah, I'm excited to to get in Sin City. Obviously, every fighter wants to headline in in Vegas or fight in Vegas at least. You know, so I'm very blessed, very fortunate that, that February thirds all go and and I'll make sure I deliver. And looking ahead throughout this year now and what it might bring, what's more important to you that the names, the big names out there that, that you've been talking about, whether it's Jaron Ennis and Mario Barrios, or is it the titles? It's a hard one because big fights where the public want. Boxing's changed. It's like people just want the biggest fights possible. People want, people would rather me in Eubank than me fight for a world title. The boxing purists won't. But the general public would rather me. All I get talked to, all, I, all pe people come to me and go, when are you smashing Newbank's head in? When are you filling Newbank in? Do us a favour. That's every, every day. I mean, it's ridiculous. You don't have anyone go, and it's mentioned anything about World Tiles, mentioned anything about Ennis, or I've had Haney a couple of times, but people just want the big fight. I'm just thinking, you look back to, to your dad's career, and, and when people talk about Nigel Benn against Chris Eubank, uh, no one ever mentions which title was at stake. Yeah. It's, it's, they talk about the night, the yeah, names, the, occasion, the atmosphere, the occasion. How, they, how that night made them feel. And I feel like that, that just goes, goes in anything. It just matters about how the night made them feel. Because you've got characters, people invest in a person, people invest in who they are, what they stand for, invest in whether they like them or not. You know, and. And that's what calls that rivalry. So for me, it is a matter of the biggest fights. Listen, the world title is always the goal. That's, you don't get much higher than a world title. My dad's most career-defining fights was Eubanks. Everyone talks about the rivalry and how it made them feel. It takes people back you know, uh, 30 years. 30 years? <laughs> yeah. 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 It takes people back 30 years. I mean, they still get spoken about now. You know, so for me, the big fights, deliver, you know, the big fights, I just let the team deal with that. I stay disciplined, do what I do. I deliver 10 out of 10 and let them just handle the rest. And with that in mind then, how important is, is this whole process now going to Vegas in terms of building the awareness of you in the States to therefore make these fights even bigger? They know who I am in the States. Like they know who I am. I've, had, I've trained in gyms where people have come in from out of nowhere just to watch me train, you know, in the States. I've had people ask me up for pictures in the streets out in America. And what about here? What's the reaction all this time on now? How, how do you sense the reaction of, of, of British fans and, and what it might be like when you take a ring walk in a British ring, <laughs> whenever that might be? Uh, I'd like to think it's a, uh, a lot of cheers, maybe a few boos. No doubt there will be more cheers than Eubank <laughs> if, the, if that fight does ever happen. Yeah, there's a lot of support. I'll probably say a lot of cheers, a lot of love, a lot of thank God we're through this because people, I feel like people ride with people with me. Are you getting that feeling, yeah? I, that's how I feel. Forget social media, the minority, um, as a loud voice speaks volumes, but in reality, uh, it's all love. <laughs> <laughs>